Hey, welcome to Money Plan Mondays. I uh, hope you guys are having a great week. It's a great start to your week. It's Monday. Uh, I missed Money Plan Mondays last week. I was out of town visiting my mom, so I decided to take that week off to give her all of my attention and time. But I'm excited to be back. And the topic that I had last week was all about um, the racial and gender wealth gap. So that's what I'll be covering today. So welcome money planners. I go live every Monday, one o'clock to talk about building a solid financial foundation. So any topic when it comes to money is things I like to cover. So for those who don't know me, I'm Malika Daniels. I am a certified money coach and the founder of Women Who Money Plan. And as a money coach, I help women to understand money, empower them to take control of their financial situation, and together we create plans to help them achieve their financial goals. We work on things such as paying off debt, building up savings, becoming more of an intentional spender. We also focus on if home ownership is a goal, on getting your finances organized so that you can be prepared to uh, become a homeowner. So that's just a little bit about me. And like I said, today we're gonna to talk about the different wealth gaps. Um, some of you have probably already heard about you know, gender wealth gaps and racial wealth gaps. And so I'm gonna cover a little bit more about those and what Women Who Money Plan, hey Nola, <laughs> what Women Who Money Plan is doing in our mission when it comes to those different wealth gaps. So first we're gonna start a little bit about the gender wealth gap. And so, a lot of you might have heard about the gender wage gap. We know that women are often paid less than men, but even more crucial than the wage gap is the wealth gap. For every dollar that a white man owns, women overall own just 32 cents to that dollar. And then black and Hispanic women own one penny to that dollar. So that means that women are not just making less money, but we're keeping less of our money that we are making. Now, uh, the gender wealth gap is caused by a few different things, lots of different things, right? Um, so the pay gap is a huge portion of it, right? We're making less money, so in turn, we, we might not have as much money available to us for us to keep. But women also spend less time in the workforce. We're more likely to take off from our careers to raise kids. We're also more likely to take off time from our jobs to help take care of elderly parents or family members and um or we might be forced to leave for different like medical situations and we're incurring pregnancies and things like that so we're just less we will usually have less time in the workforce than males um, there's an investing gap when it comes to women women tend to be a little bit more fearful of investing in stocks and in the market because we might not understand it as well and so there's a lot less women that are investing than men. And in order to increase wealth, you need to invest your money. So we're not investing at the same rate as men. Uh, the financial industry is dominated by men. That is one of the reasons why I started Women Who Money Plan is so that uh, people can see representation, right? Being able to speak to a woman about your finances and feel seen and heard and talk to someone that might have similar situations as you can be really helpful in getting you to talk to somebody about it instead of just trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, there's also a debt disparity when it comes to gender. Women tend to have more student loans. We tend to have more credit card debt. And a lot of the credit card debt is because of the pink tax. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the pink tax, but this is the reality that women pay more for their everyday needs than the males. Um, even down to toys for the little girl, little girl toys versus like little boy toys um, tend to cost more. Clothes that are typically for girls tend to cost more than the quote unquote typical clothes for boys. And even when it comes to senior care, when you're elderly, a lot of the times women are paying more for their care than their male counterparts. Women also tend to spend more money on their family than males, and that can add up to the debt as well. But not only does it come to um, women having carrying more debt, but women also tend to have higher rates on that debt. So like let's say if you have credit card debt, you might be paying at least 1% point higher than males with that same amount of debt. So there's just so many factors um, that come to it. And then also, I just this point astonishes me, uh, the fact that women were not even allowed to have a bank account without a male signature until 1974. So we have had less time to accumulate wealth than when it comes to males, right? We weren't even allowed to have a bank account on our, of our own. 
And so that is going to be a huge factor in the amount of wealth that women have been able to, uh, to have. So Women Who Money Plan focuses on helping women specifically because of this reason. Sometimes I've been asked, like, why do you only work on women? Like, because the reality is we have a different uh, dynamic that we have to deal with when it comes to wealth than what men might have to go through. And then in addition to Women Who Money Plan focusing on the gender wealth gap, I also have a strong passion on focusing on the racial wealth gap. As a black woman, I know that it is important that we start to really take control of our finances and to see ourselves in this financial industry so that we can overcome a lot of the hardships that we might have uh, presented to us that other people might not have. So when it comes to the racial wealth gap, it is estimated this quote blows my mind. It's estimated that black wealth will be at zero, zero, zero dollars by 2053. And that's if nothing major changes, if there's not a major shift in how the trend is going. Currently, the wealth gap for uh, black Americans is trending down. And it is going has been going down for years and it is estimated that by 2053 it'll be at zero so it is so important that we are actively doing things to improve the situation and to change that trajectory so a few things that uh lead to this racial wealth gap are lower pay minorities um get lower pay than their caucasian counterparts there's less home ownership when it comes to the minority community Home ownership is one of the major factors in wealth building. And if we are owning less homes, we are not able to build wealth as much. Also, our home denial rate for loans is much higher for minorities. So even though we might be trying to become owner, homeowners, we're being denied at higher rates. Uh, we have higher levels of debt, higher less levels of student loan debt, higher levels of credit card debt. We are factoring things such as different discriminations, job discrimination when it comes to the types of jobs that we might be able to get or the level of pay that we're getting within those jobs. Um, and we've also just had a lack of ability to pass down wealth due to the history of uh, black Americans in this country. So there are so many factors, a lot of them outside of our control when it comes to the what's contributing to the gender and racial wealth gap. And so even though there's so many things that are outside of our control, Women Who Money Plan knows that there are things that we can do to improve our situation. Just because there is a gender and racial wealth gap, that does not mean that we just fold our hands and say, oh, it's too bad, I'm a woman, I'm a minority, and I'm just never gonna be good with money, I'm never gonna have a lot of money. That is not the case. There are things that can be done to improve your financial situation, and that is exactly why I created Women Who Money Plan. And so with Women Who Money Plan, I help women to learn their financial power. We have financial power. We can choose where we spend our money. We can spend intentionally. We can choose to spend more with women-owned businesses, with minority-owned businesses. And as soon as we start to better realize our control and power that we have, the more we can do with our money and the more that we can make bigger changes with our money. Um, we can develop healthier habits for the money that we do have, learning to keep a little bit of everything that we make and not just keep it because, you know, saving is great, but if we want to build wealth, we have to learn to invest it. And sometimes just uh, taking that leap of getting out and starting to invest in things such as real estate or in the stock market and contributing to your 401ks and things like that, that we might be a little bit weary to do because we don't have a lot of I guess practice in that field or a lot of knowledge in that industry. I, with Women Who Money Plan, I'm helping you to build that foundation so that you understand these are critical things that you need if you want to build wealth. Not only that, but understand the importance of passing wealth down to our generation, to, to future generations, passing wealth down and passing good financial habits. If we can show our children how to be healthy with our money, then they can grow up and do healthier things with their money and have those better habits that we might not have been taught, right? A lot of our parents might have just been trying to survive and we are moving out of survival into thriving now, okay? That is the goal with Women Who Money Plan. We're not trying to get by, we're not just trying to get by, we are going to thrive and grow wealth. 
So another thing is obviously home ownership. I talked about home ownership being crucial when it comes to building wealth. And so Women Who Money Plan is really dedicated to helping people get their finances in order so that they can get approved for those loans. A lot of the denial might be because a, a poor credit score, high amounts of debt, and we're gonna tackle those things so that we can be approved for loans at higher rates and we can um, really just start building that wealth to build a pass down to our families that we have not been able to do. It's time to kind of take some things into our own hands, okay? So if you're ready to actively work to improve your financial situation, things even such as like improving your income. Whatever income you're at right now, it does not have to be set in stone. You can always do things to actively improve your income and make changes. Go for those promotions, start those businesses. Uh, one quote I heard a while ago is saying that men are known to apply for jobs even if they don't meet the qualifications. They might not meet the basic qualifications, um, they might be underqualified, but they'll still go for it and apply for those jobs and because they are taking that risk and applying for them, they're more likely to get those jobs. Whereas opposed to women, we tend to not apply for a job unless we meet every single qualification. And then if not, we're not gonna go for it. And so we're passing up these opportunities. But if you start to learn that going for those jobs, going for those promotions, um, you are going to be able to make higher pay, uh, get higher um, positions in your industry and things like that. So those are just some key things that are really crucial for Women Who Money plan to, uh, to impart into our clients and the people that we work with. Um, another thing too is just increasing your financial knowledge. The more you know, the better off you can do, the better decisions you can make. And so that's a huge piece of Women Who Money Plan as well, is helping people to increase their financial literacy and just become lifelong learners about how else can you improve uh, your financial situation and reach all of your goals. I also mentioned earlier how I'm a strong believer that representation matters, right? So being able to relate to the person that you're talking to, see yourself in someone that's sitting across from you um, that might have similar experiences than you from you can be really helpful in making changes. Sometimes people will not seek out support or seek out help because they don't feel like they can connect with the person on the other side. Um, but I'm hoping to change some of that. So please don't ever feel like you don't have someone that you can talk to. There are so many people kind of getting into this industry now of coaching and support for finances. And it is a, it's becoming more, uh, the money coaching itself is a lot more women dominated, different than some of the uh, other typical financial positions that you might have heard of in the past. So again, with Women Who Money Plan, we provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you change your financial future. We support women to push past these different gaps, these gender gaps, the, the racial wealth gap, and we're gonna create our own story. We're not gonna let what's happened in the past or these systemic things kind of dictate what happens for our financial future. And that's the, the big piece for me. Uh, if you're ready to fight back against all these gender and racial wealth gaps, schedule that free consultation call with me and let's see if we can create a plan for you to achieve your financial goals. As always, I'll be back here again next Monday, one o'clock for our quick money plan Monday um, conversations. And then also, if you haven't yet joined my Facebook group, Women Who Money Plan, be sure to tune in there because it's also a great spot to talk with other women who are on that same journey of trying to improve their finances. I would love to hear from you in the comments about any t thoughts you have when it comes to the g gender gap, the racial wealth gap, any things that you um, would want to see happen to change the trajectory of these, these different racial racial gaps and gender wealth gaps and things like that. I'd love to continue that conversation. So hit me up if you want to talk more and I will see you next week. Have a great week, money planners, and take care.